Hello everyone, welcome to the Nino Kuni Review. <laughs> I'm your host, Rising, aka Rising Soul 88, of Remote Control. So, Nino Kuni. Hmm. Is that what brings you here? To watch a review? Well, I've got it for you. Yes. It seems our friends at Level 5 and Studio Ghibli, the makers of Spirited Away, my neighbor Totoro, and Howl's Moving Castle have teamed up to bring us this amazing RPG. Let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> so the big question on everyone's mind is, is Nino Kuni worth it? And without a doubt, you're getting every bit of your dollars worth with this game. Now, it's a PS3 exclusive, and at first I was kind of bummed. I'm an achievement whore, and I like to have my games on my Xbox so that I can play in parties and talk to friends and, you know, show off my achievements. But I'm glad that they chose to put this one on the PS3. It really took advantage of the Blu-ray, and I felt that any other system wouldn't have been able to support the kind of gameplay and story that Studio Ghibli and Level 5 wanted to flesh out. This game uses one of those open engagement fighting systems where you run around the map and enemies kind of just run up to you to engage you in battle. Once the fight begins, you can actually choose from three other fighters known as your familiars. So like any other RPG, not only do you meet cool people along the way to kind of join your team, but you also can build a team within yourself of different uh, fighters that have their own special traits and abilities. My one concern with the battle mechanic was that attacking didn't really make sense and it wasn't very fluid. I found that most times I had to rely on my spells because my attacks just hurt me more than they helped me. If you were paying attention a few seconds ago, you may have noticed that I couldn't really attack the Sorbor until I dealt with the first enemy I was locking onto. In high risk battles, this is kind of frustrating and a lot of commands have to be used at once and it makes up for a lot of pause and go gameplay. After each battle, you will be rewarded with experience points, and you want to take advantage of these battles because later in the game, you're going to read some really intense bad guys. I mean, we're talking people that you walk in the room and they make you instantly piss your pants. You got the nightmare from Rusty. I'm looking like, oh my god, I'm going to fight this thing. You got the guardians. Don't even get me started on the guardians. Uh, every time you go in a forest, there's a guardian like, hey, I'm here to fight you. I'm going to kill you. And you're like, whoa, Mr. Guardian, I don't even know you like that. I don't even know why you're upset with me. Can't we talk this out? And he's like, nah, man, it's time to fight. Let's go. Take off your gloves. So you're really going to want to play smart. Uh, I'd recommend in the beginning of the game, fight as many people as you can, as many of those uh, beasties, as Mr. Drippy affectionately calls them. Uh, fight as many of those as you can because you're going to need the experience. In order to get past certain parts of the game, you'll also have to collect certain emotions from people. So you'll find someone that's missing a certain type of emotion and you'll actually have to go out and find someone that has an abundance of it and collect it. So whenever the locket starts to turn green and glow, that means that the person that you're in contact with has an abundance of an emotion that you may or may not need. You won't really find out until you ask them for it. Some of the ones you'll find are enthusiasm, kindness, and courage, just to name a few. Now, it's not always going to be as simple as just finding the right emotion to free up someone's broken heart. There are going to be times where you have to travel back to Oliver's world to find that person's doppelganger or soulmate in order to give them a push in the right direction. Now, when the game told me that this was something I was going to be doing, I, I didn't even know how to react. I was My mind was blown. I couldn't believe that this was something they actually thought uh, to put into the game, to be able to travel back between these two worlds and change something in one world or get to know some information in one world that taught you more about the other world. In closing, I would just like to say, Mr. Drippy, that hat looks amazing on you. Uh, don't change anything, anything about you. I don't know why I said it like that. Don't change anything. But guys... You've been great. Remote control, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, 
everything you already been doing you guys have been amazing if it weren't for you we wouldn't be doing this check us out uh, check out the podcast check out the facebook check out the website remotecontrol.com up and running stunning beautiful better than ever what else can i say about it that you don't already know again i'm rising r y z n g at rising on twitter uh hit me up 